I currently live in Boise, Idaho, so I flew to SF to catch the train. And I do a bunch of LGBT organizing and climate change organizing in Idaho. What is your last name? Uh, Blakely. James Blakely. Um, so, I'm going to try to distill a one hour presentation down to five to ten minutes. <laughs> um, so several years ago, I got involved in the fight to stop the Keystone XL pipeline and kind of had been working on some other tar sands pipelines in the Vermont area and kind of always felt this kind of disconnect. Um, heard stories, saw photos and videos from the tar sands. Um, and then I got the opportunity to go to the tar sands uh, several years ago. And so I took that opportunity and went to what is what was known as the fourth annual Tar Sands Healing Walk in Northern Alberta, which is led and coordinated by the First Nation tribes up there. Um, I ended up going back the following year as well for the fifth and final healing walk. They decided to kind of end the healing walk, um, not because the issues and problems have been solved and the Tar Sands have been shut down, but because the Tar Sands it's kind of like an octopus. It's got many tentacles spreading its way across North America. So, um, so what they're hoping is that in the future, places, other places that are impacted by tar sands will kind of do their own healing walks um, and whatnot. So really quickly, I'm just gonna show you a super powerful video from the walk that I think will kind of help sum up some, some of the aspects of the walk and I'll briefly go over some of my um, things about the walk. What's that? How they get the oil out of the sand, how intensive it is. Yeah, I will cover that. like the Keystone XL Pipeline, Line 9, Northern Gateway Pipeline, Pacific Trail, and Kinder Morgan. And those that today were impacted by an explosion by train north of Montreal that was carrying crude oil. And we want to say that enough is enough. So we walked by a lot of kind of some of the tar sands mining itself. Um, we saw some of the giant equipment used in um, processing tar sands. Um, there's big dump trucks that are used up there. They're, they cost millions of dollars just for one truck. They can fit about the size of a 4,000 foot square home inside of the truck, so they're pretty huge. Um, we walk by a bunch of tailing ponds, which are just massive lakes that are super toxic. We have propane cannons lying the perimeter of the pond and are constantly going off. Um, so it kind of almost had this feeling like we're marching off to war. Uh, because there was a lot of drumming on the march from native people and then we'd hear basically propane cannons off in the distance until we walked by the tailing ponds and were right there. And then in the ponds they had giant orange scarecrows. All this was to scare off um, wildlife and that kind of stuff. Um, one of the most interesting things that we learned um, was just how much this is affecting the people themselves up there as opposed to just the environment. Um, this area was pretty much all boreal forest, which is one of the world's largest, most intact forests. Um, very rich in biodiversity. Um, very important for migratory uh, bird species, use the area quite a bit. Um, but this is also the traditional hunting grounds for the First Nations people. 
Um, that's where they gathered their food. That's how they survived and lived. Um, but now a lot of this land um, has been cleared away and what few animals do remain, they're coming back with all these toxins in their bodies, cancers and poisons, and now the people up there can't, you know, hunt for elk or moose or deer or fish the river because everything's so polluted and toxic. Um, so now they're kind of almost forced to, um, the only real jobs up there are for the oil companies. So they're almost kind of now forced to go to work for these oil companies or leave their land. Um, so there's a question about how the tar sands is mined. Um, so basically the area is all forest. Um, so what they have to do is they have to come in and they have to basically rip apart the land. First take out all the forest. Um, there's an industry term called, um, that they use for that called overburden. Um, which is basically anything that stands in the way of the product that they're after. So all the trees, the animals, the people, it's all considered overburdened to them. So they clear, they have to clear away all this land and then they can begin the mining process. Um, there's a couple of different ways that they can mine this stuff. It's called bitumen and it's basically a, um, kind of a sticky tar-like substance, um, super thick. And um, I'm really only f kind of familiar with uh, open pit mining. So they have these big machines and then they basically just take out um, tons and tons of soil. And then they have to separate kind of all the sand and all the particles away from the bitumen. Um, so they use all these different chemicals and lots of water to do this. And once they extract the bitumen out, it then has to get sent to refineries to be upgraded into, into a synthetic oil.